Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here from Scratch, and today we are talking about the Godot game engine, specifically a very, very cool open source module for the Godot game engine, Voxel Tools. Now what I'm going to be doing is focusing a little bit more on the add-ons and modules that are out there for the Godot engine, seeing as Godot 4.0 is just a little bit off on the horizon. Let's look at some of the Godot 3.x stuff out there to get excited about. Now as I mentioned early on, this is Voxel Tools for Godot we are looking at, and this is a remarkably robust module for Godot. Uh, it's a C++ based module for creating volumetric worlds in the Godot engine. If you don't know, modules are basically uh, extensions for the Godot engine. A lot of Godot itself is written in modules. You should actually check out my uh, Godot with C++ video I did just a couple weeks back. It'll explain what modules are all about. But one of the challenges here is modules need to be compiled for you to get started with them. But nice thing here is they have made that work for you. So Voxel Tools, what do we have in terms of features? And what is a Voxel? Well, Voxel is something called a volumetric pixel. It's basically boxes. Your world is made up of cubes or voxels. Uh, that data structure then can represent either a big chunky kind of world like what you see in um, say Minecraft or Roblox for example or it could be more smooth and realistic. So you can create real cool terrain and you can do cool things with voxels you can't do with height maps. For example have things that layer over top of each other like say a cave system. So, the features of Voxel Tools for Godot are real-time editable 3D terrain. Uh, unlike height map based terrain, this allows for overhangs, tunnels, and user creation and destruction. We're going to see that in the demo they provide. Physics-based collision with Raycast support, infinite terrain made by paging sections in and out. Voxel data streamed from a variety of sources, which includes the ability to write your own generators. Uh, Minecraft-style blocky voxel terrain with the multiple materials and baked ambient occlusion. Smooth terrain using transvoxel. Uh, levels of details for smooth terrain. And voxel storage using 8-bit channels for uh, any general purpose. And what it doesn't do, level of detail for blocky terrain, game-specific features such as cave generation or procedural trees, though it might include those tools to help doing them. And editor tools. This is probably one of the kind of downsides. There's nothing there for shaping a voxel terrain inside of the Godot engine. When you're working with this, in in fact, inside of Godot, you're going to see pretty much nothing. So you're going to do more of a uh, programmable approach if you're going to go the voxel route. And it cannot import and export a voxel format. All right, so we got some details on how to get it going. In the future, there's going to be LODs, uh, support general voxel use, not just for trains, other meshing algorithms, and GPU offloading, perhaps from Godot 4.0. There is a getting started guide and a couple of demos. We'll get back to that in a second. But the key thing here is the pre-built binaries. I, of course, we'll link all of this down below. The very cool thing here is, as I mentioned earlier on, when you are working with modules in the Godot game engine, uh, sadly, you have to build everything uh, again. So you basically have to build Godot from source. It's not a really painful process. It takes about 20 minutes, but you have to do it. Well, what they've done here is basically made um, versions available. So there's a version of 3.2.2 RC from March 2020 that you can just go ahead and download. And that is what I'm going to be using now. But if you want to go ahead and build this yourself with the most current version, there are instructions to go about doing so. There's also a tutorial on how to go about and create voxel trains, which is a cool thing. We got a bit of a... Um, a troubleshooting guide here as well. So this is the example I'm going to head, go ahead and use is the voxel game tutorial. Uh, you go ahead and clone it, basically just grab the code, clone it down, uh, and then open and import it into um, the Godot engine. And then on top of that, there is some documentation for getting started with voxel tools, things about how to create it, how to texture it, and so on. So there is a robust set of documentation. There is a tool with pre-built binaries for you, everything that you could possibly need. So let us just jump in and take a look. So I've already imported that project. This is it right here. And really all you need to do is open up the scene file. Any of these TSCNs. Uh, so we're in the folder FPS demo. And you can see a number of different options. We're going to start with a blocky one. This is your traditional Minecraft style. Basically just open that file up and then hit the F6 key. And it will launch that particular scene. Um, or you can go in and set it to the active scene. So here you go. Uh, we've got a Minecraft style world being created for us. Pretty cool. And then on top of that, remember we mentioned earlier on that the voxels can be used to create caves and destructive environments and so on. Well, there's this little guy here that we're controlling with our mouse. We can actually waz walk around. Well, you'll notice if you hit the left mouse button, we shoot some voxels. We make some new voxels as a result. Or what you can do is use the left mouse button and delete. So let's just see how far down this rabbit hole goes. And down and down and down and let's go over for a little bit and around. So you can basically start deforming the geography in real time. Now you'll also notice over the top left corner, 
I'm getting 300 frames per second. So it is a performant algorithm. And if you wanted to create a Minecraft style uh, game or application, you can do so using this guy. Basically, again, I am walking around using the WASD keys and you can go vertically by hitting the space. We've got a very uh, uh, released from reality jump mechanic going on. So you can really kind of jump and climb back up. But yeah, as you can see, you could carve out a world at your heart's content. You could obviously use the same algorithms and approach to go ahead and create, um, you know, Minecraft style crafting mechanics instead of this. So that's a really cool example for sure. Let's get escape and exit out of there. And now we're going to go ahead and show you a height map generation one. This is taking a standard height map approach. Height map is basically a grayscale encoded texture. And based off the color, the blackness or the whiteness, you're either going to go higher or lower with your render terrain. And this is going to create voxel terrain that is then smooth. And we've also got an option for the same thing with the LOD. So just again, double click it to open it up and then hit the F6 key to launch that particular scene. And here we're seeing a different example. So you're seeing more of a realistic approach to um, terrain generation. This is still using voxels. It's just been smoothed over with textures applied. So we can wander around once again, and you can see some pop-in going on. I believe the LOD version will have less pop-in. But here we go, fall down in the world. So Geronimo. And then once again, what you can do here is use your left arrow and you start carving it out. Once again, you're seeing the textures are applied, whereas the right, you can start generating. So basically I'm making bridges by molding in between. So a really cool example, I gotta admit. And I think this one actually, if you carve down deep enough into the center of the earth, I think there's water eventually, but I might be making that up. No, no water eventually. So here we go, we've created quite a mine shaft. If I look up, there's where we came from. And now we start carving to the side if we want. So as you can see, you can dynamically generate terrains using this guy. It's a really cool um, module for sure. And then we got another one. This one is based off of a noise map. Uh, you're, you're kind of generating the height map in the same way, but in this particular case, you're using a noise map. You can actually generate the noise map directly inside. It's, it's one of those kinds of textures you can create inside of the Godot engine itself. And with that selected, we'll just go ahead and hit F6 and run it. Now this one, I think I need to let it run for a few seconds for it to figure everything out. Yeah. So here we go. Same thing, but this world was generated instead of using height map by using a noise, bleh, noise map. And same deal, so we can carve as we go. So let's just drill a hole as we're falling to the ground. Yeah. And let's kind of go up the side, see if I went down too far. All right, so I'm kind of climbing. Yeah, there we go, we're back in the world. So there you can see, you can carve holes in the world. And what I could actually do, this is actually kind of neat, is I could punch a hole all the way through. And if I kind of hit the top here, we could potentially make it, so you could make cave networks like so. So you can see sort of where the power of, um, the voxel approach really comes in and you can see some really cool examples of what you can do with this guy. There's a couple of other examples mixed throughout here. So here's a trans voxel test. I'm not sure what this one actually does. Let's go ahead and run it. Again, just select uh, errors out. All right, so we'll skip that. I don't want to bother diagnosing the error. And this one is a custom stream. Let's go ahead and run it. And I think this one does kind of a waveform all around you. Yeah, so let this run for a couple seconds and you're going to see um, it's generating, uh, I don't know how I would word this, uh, mounds, I guess, like consistent. So you're seeing a really smooth waveform being generated kind of to infinity and beyond. And I don't think you can do anything until it's finished loading. So when I hit something, it's gonna say, yeah, see at the bottom it says area not editable. But once it's done, I believe we can edit it. Yeah, so there we go. So we can start carving a hole in the world. So it's another approach you can take. Um, to do basically the same thing. So that is a number of different examples for voxel generation. I'm gonna go back here, take a look at how one of these was set up. So for example, let's go back to the Minecraft style approach. You see over here, you have you know the player controller we're using to go around in the world. Uh, there is a script attached to that, so if you wanna see how it works, but the, the star of the show here is of course the voxel terrain. Now let's open that guy up. So you see over here a number of different pro uh, properties here. Uh, the stream, this is how it's generated. So you see here, there's a number of different options here. So uh, you do voxel generation, flat, height map based, image based, noise based, 2D noise based, wave based, and so on. Uh, you need to use a, oh, let's get out of there, a voxel library. Uh, so that is defined, that is actually available in the documentation, a little bit more details of what's going there. You pass in the viewer, do you want collisions or not? And then the materials to use in the world. In the documentation, we're going to see some instructions on how you can go ahead and set up those materials. And then another example, let's go back to the height map one. You can see here, voxel terrain. This instead is using uh, image 
as the option. And you see it's passing in this particular map, so a distorted noise map. We'll go ahead and take a look at that, guys. So let's go ahead and show that in the file system and show in file manager. I'm not actually 100% certain, but there doesn't be a way to view an image directly in Godot. And that seemed a little strange to me. I thought you could. Here is an example of a height, of a height map. Again, I told you it's generally a black and white encoded image. Uh, I think, let's see, down is black, up is white. And I'm 50% sure I'm right. And if I'm wrong, flip that around. But basically, the, the data is encoded. This is your world's height and you know the, the distance down and the distance up. And then the sharpness that you're seeing in the edge. So we're seeing a real sharp contrast there. That's going to turn into a steep either drop or, or um, rise, depending on the actual color you're working with. So this is an example of the kind of map that you can pass in. And this is when you're using the uh, voxel generator image type. Again, there's a number of different voxel generation types that are here. So that one is using this guy right there uh, let's go out of here and then we got some down here again the player is passed in um, the voxel library is defined the max viewing distance is defined and then your textures to use are defined here as well and uh, yeah that, that's kind of the idea behind it we head on back over here again uh, this is where you want to kind of really get started if you want to move beyond you know just playing around with their examples they do have some details on here how to go ahead and create your own voxel train for example um, and they define a little bit better of if you want to go blocky versus not blocky, what you need to set and so on. Got some details on working with, um, you know, how to go ahead and actually build this guy uh, to work with Godot. Again, it is a module which requires you to recompile it with C++. And some more details, texturing. Uh, texturing is probably one of the more complicated things because you can have multiple different textures going on. So this shows you how to set up and create uh, different materials for your landscapes. And then we've got some, if we go to the very bottom here, uh, API documentation for using all of the various different things in code. It, it's, a, it's an impressive project. I really have to say that. So if you wanted to work with voxels in Godot, uh, Godot voxels module is definitely one to check out. And the cool thing, once again, is you just head on over here and they do have um, pre-made binaries available for you for a number of different platforms, which is really kind of cool. So if you want to uh, say we'll go ahead and grab the most current version here. You can see Windows 64.32, Linux 64.32, OS X, and all the export templates have been made for you. So if you really want to get in there, they've built everything for you. You're not the most current version. So if you want to, again, use this with the most current version of the Godot game engine, you're going to be building it yourself. But definitely a very cool project. The only thing I've kind of noticed here, and I'm a little confused by this. So here we are at Godot uh, Voxels with the root archive. Again, I will link this down below. Uh, go on down to the license. And it's strange because it doesn't use, so the Godot engine is under the MIT license, where this one's under the Voxel Tools license, it seems like. Um, but it's it's basically MIT. Uh, so I, I don't know why they didn't just publish this under the MIT license. What it allows you to do is basically whatever you want, uh, just no warranty. Uh, so if this causes your computer to burst into flames or become, you know, a raging asshole of some kind, uh, it, it's not their fault because that happened. So uh, just be aware, uh, Voxel Tools are, it's not under a, a recognized open source license, but what I can see of this license, it's basically MIT. So I'm not really sure what's happening there, but just one of those things to be aware of. It was also committed, uh, let's see, four years ago. So uh, maybe it's just an oversight. Anyways, that's it. That is Voxel Tools. Again, all of the relevant links will be down below. Let me know what you think and let me know what other modules or add-ons you think I should cover for the Godot engine. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.